Okay, in this video I'm going to go over some of the features uh, that you'll be using with the Planetary Orbit Simulator. This is a simulation of different planetary orbits that you can adjust, uh, you can control the parameters, and test out the various ideas involved with Kepler's Three Laws of Motion. We're going to start out by testing Kepler's first law of motion and investigating some of its properties. Now, uh, as you'll recall, Kepler's first law of motion says that the planets move around the sun in an elliptical path with the sun at one focus. Now, there are a lot of different controls here in the simulator, and so you can see here I've circled Kepler's first law. That tab will access all the parameters that are appropriate for uh, investigating the properties of Kepler's first law. Now over in the right hand corner you can see the orbit settings parameters. You can control the semi-major axis which is the width of the ellipse. Now that one's not as startling because as you change the the size of the ellipse it actually scales so that it continues to fit in the screen. So uh, you can actually make the ellipse bigger or smaller but it'll look the same size in the simulator. The other orbit parameter that you can control is the eccentricity here, which controls how smushed the ellipse is, if it's closer to being a circle or closer to being a line. So look at the ellipse that's drawn in the simulator here, and you can see it has an eccentricity of about 0.4. Uh, and it looks vaguely circular, but not quite circular. You can see the sun is offset from the center, and of course we know that that will be at one of the two foci of this ellipse. But you'll see that as we increase the eccentricity that the ellipse flattens out. So here we've increased the eccentricity to 0 0.678, so from about 0.4 to about 0.7, and you can see that the ellipse looks much more elongated. And you can uh, change the eccentricity by typing directly into this uh, text box here, or you can simply grab the slider with your mouse and drag it back and forth. Now here we see we've activated a couple of the parameters in the center panel, and that is to show the empty focus. Now we know from Kepler's first law that the orbit follows in an elliptical path with the sun at one of the two foci. The other, two foci, the other of the two foci is out in empty space somewhere, and we know that they'll be related to the center. They'll have to be equal distances from the center. Here I have unchecked the show empty focus and show center controls, and I've checked the show semi-minor and semi-major axis controls. So these two axes are demonstrated here, and you can see their size. And of course, they'll change as you adjust the size or the eccentricity of the ellipse. Now here you can see we've selected the show radial lines option, and we show the radii from the each focus, this focus, and the focus where the sun is sitting to the point on the ellipse. Now this looks a little bit deceptive because it looks like this R2 value goes only to the sun, but actually it goes over all the way to the point and it overlaps with R1. So R1 goes from the sun focus to the point on the ellipse and R2 goes from the empty focus to the point on the ellipse. Now, if you grab the planet here with your mouse, you can drag it to a different position, and that will show you these two radii and how they uh, each touch the points on the ellipse, uh, as we'll see in the next slide. So here we've dragged the planet over a little bit, and we can again see the radius 1 goes from the sun focus to the point on the ellipse where the planet is orbiting, and R2 goes from the empty focus to the point on the ellipse where the planet is orbiting. Now, in this slide, we are showing this region here that I've circled, and one of the features of an ellipse, the thing that makes something an ellipse, it, instead of just simply being an oval, is the fact that these two values, R1, which is that distance, and R2, which is that distance, when you add them up, they equal a constant value. So if you drag this uh, planet to any point on the ellipse, the, di the, the distance of R1 will change, the distance of R2 will change, but when you add those two together, that number will be constant. And so you can uh, drag it around and you'll see that indeed that number does not change, even though these two numbers do. Those distances will always add up to give you the same value. 
One way that you can actually draw an ellipse would be to get a piece of string, say as long as this distance plus that distance, and tack it down with two thumbtacks into a piece of cardboard, and then take a pencil and grab the string with the pencil and pull it to the, the, two, the two sides of the string are taut, and then just trace around, and then the strings will guide you around and ensure that those distances remain constant, i.e. the length of the string, and that will let you draw a perfect ellipse if you ever want to draw one. Next, we have selected the tab to set up the configuration for Kepler's second law. Now, again, we have the parameters up here that let us control the semi-major axis and the eccentricity of the orbit. We also have this drop-down box, which lets us select the orbits of individual planets. If you choose uh, to simply use the default planet, that's one that's not corresponding to a real planet. It's, a, it's an imaginary planet. And you can always get back to the imaginary planet by hitting this reset button up here at the top in the right corner, right there. Now we have this control here in the center which tells us to start the animation and it also lets us uh, change the rate at which the planets orbit the sun. So when you click this start animation button, the planet will start orbiting the sun and you can make it go faster or slower. If you change the size of the planet by controlling the semi-major axis, then you will uh, possibly need to uh, increase the speed for it to move around in a reasonable rate. Here we see the ability to adjust the size and notice that it's set as a fraction. So you can set it, for example, here it's set to be 1 16th of the total orbit. And we can also start the animation by simply click the start sweeping button and then every time you click this it will create a new sweep. Now remember Kepler's second law says that an imaginary line, an imaginary line drawn from the Sun to the planet will sweep out an area as the planet moves, say from there to there, it'll sweep out a particular area. And if I pick the same time interval in the planet's orbit, it will sweep out the same area. And what that means is that over on this side, the planet will be going faster, and on this side, the planet will be going slower. So here we see the two sets of controls that are the most important, the starting the animation, and uh, the center panel of controls that will uh, adjust all the things that we said. Now there are a couple of other things that you can do. As you hit the start sweeping button here, you can hit it multiple times and create multiple sweeps like I showed you in the previous slide. You can also hit the erase sweeps button and uh, you can also play around with these check marks to sweep continuously and if you want you can try using the sound effect. Here I've shown you the effect of pressing the start sweeping button four times and each of these represents an equal time interval. That time interval being 1 16th of the period of the orbit, the time it takes to go all the way around. And you can see that here where it's far away from the sun, the planet is moving pretty slowly. It just gets from here to here in that time interval. But here when it's closest to the sun, it covers a larger distance. It's going much faster but in all of these cases, all of these areas will be the same area. That's what Kepler's second law tells us. Here we're showing the configuration for Kepler's third law. Again, we can set up the tab here. Okay, here we see the uh, semi-major axis control, which lets you adjust the size of the ellipse. And then down here in the central area, you can see that Kepler's third law is demonstrated for you. Now remember, Kepler's third law tells us that the period of the planet squared, the period measured in years, you take that number and square it, that's equal to the distance of the semi-major axis cubed to the third power. And so you can see here that both of these are equal to 1.77 and uh, you can adjust the size of the semi-major axis and see what happens to the period of the planet. So that's basically how the controls of the simulator work. So you should be ready to go on to the worksheet and fill out uh, all the questions as you go through and do the animations that you're directed to do. And then after you filled out the worksheet, you should be ready to take the quiz. So good luck and good hunting.